2022 at 6 p.m. and the board has been in closed session since 4 p.m. In attendance tonight, we have myself, Barbara Broche, Mrs. Handy C Sandy Hinkson, Mr. Stephen Schwartz, and Mrs. Allison Barclay. Mr. Adam Skunkwitz is absent this evening, or I'm sorry, he's participating via Zoom. Um, we have the secretary to the board, Dr. Jody McClay, superintendent, Mrs. Nicole Lash, assistant superintendent, business support services, Dr. Karen Valdez, assistant superintendent, educational support services, Mr. Frank Arce, assistant superintendent, human resources development, Mrs. Kimberly Velez, assistant superintendent, student support services, and Mrs. Lene Anasibar, as executive assistant to the superintendent. Mr. Schwartz will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At approximately 9.30 p.m., the governing board will determine which of the remaining agenda items can be considered and acted upon prior to 10 p.m. and may continue all other items and which additional time is required until a future meeting. All meetings are scheduled to end at 10 p.m. Mr. Schwartz will now lead us in the readout of the action items taken in closed session. <coughs> it was moved by Member Schwartz and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the suspended expulsion of student 282973. The vote was 5-0. It was moved by Member Schwartz and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing panel regarding the expulsion of student number 34829. The vote was 5-0. It was moved by Member Schwartz and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the settlement agreement and release of certificated employee number 149529, effective June 30th, 2022. The vote was 5-0. It was moved by Member Schwartz and seconded by Member Barclay to approve the settlement agreement and release of certificated employee number 2827 Four six, effective June third, two thousand twenty-two. The vote was five zero. Thank you, Dr. McLean. All right, I'm gonna to try to do this without crying. This is gonna be a tough one. This is after 41 years in public education and service to the students in the state of California. This is Dr. Valdez's last school board meeting. She actually has two days left of this life of service that she has done. Um, so we have just a, a small token of appreciation for you. Like I said, Karen has been giving of herself and her expertise for 41 years. She started as a teacher, um, I believe 1981, if I've done my homework correctly. She came to Temecula Valley Unified the year that we unified, actually, in 1989. She was not only Teacher of the Year twice in our district, she was also a County Teacher of the Year. And these are absolute, just amazing accomplishments. She then was tapped by Riverside County Office of Education to go and work as a coordinator and then as a director. She was then tapped by Menifee Union School District as an assistant superintendent of educational support services, curriculum instruction. Then Hemet Unified stole her from Menifee to do assistant superintendent of student support services before we got her to come full circle and come back and finish her career in Temecula during a global pandemic as the assistant superintendent of ed services. In addition to all of that, she has national leadership experience, state leadership experience, local leadership experience. She is published in her field. She's just 
nothing short of amazing. She's been on the California State Board of Education, which is an unheard of accomplishment. And it has been an amazing honor to have you on our team and to finish your career. I feel so blessed to have worked with you and to have learned from you. And so we have, I'm gonna try not to drop it. In appreciation of your years of dedication, Dr. Karen Valdez, congratulating you on your retirement. The best part is I know where she lives. <laughs> She's in our area. She's in our district. <laughs> so we will hopefully have her grandbabies too. So hopefully she won't go far. But I will put this back for you. Do you want it? With that, I know there's not very many people here, but she deserves a huge round of applause. The Governing Board welcomes public comments. This is the time for open session public comments. Public comments are allowed up to a maximum of three minutes per comment in the order received to a maximum total time of 30 minutes per item for comments on agenda items or non-agenda items. For consent agenda item topics, a limit of three minutes will be allowed from one speaker. Unless the item has been placed on the published agenda in accordance with the Brown Act, there bill shall be no action taken. No discussion will be made regarding personnel issues in open session. All public comments are an important part of the board meeting and are given careful consideration by the governing board. Are there any remaining public comments on any agenda items this evening? Our first speaker tonight is Susan Mianento. I'm not sure if I said that right. Uh, Miyamoto. Miyamoto. The timer is on the screen, and we'll give you a little bit of a warning at 30 seconds. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. McClay and school board members. Um, thank you for listening to me this evening. My name is Susan Miyamoto. I'm a Temecula resident, and my two sons have gone through. TVUSD, they're now, it's been 10 years. Um, I'm the president currently of the Temecula Valley Conservatory of the Arts, which is a, a local nonprofit based here in Temecula. We have a program called the Temecula Streams Project where we provide a before school program um, to fifth, fifth graders and um, at several of the elementary schools. But during the pandemic, um, you know, we weren't allowed to go into the schools, so one of our teachers assisted uh, Mrs. Lugo online on Zoom, and then this past year she was assisting her in person. Um, I was pleased to hear that tonight the board will be considering hiring a VAPA teacher on a special assignment. A VAPA coordinator in this district has been on my wish list for many years. Um, we know the arts are essential to a well-rounded, balanced education for our children and play a critical role in supporting mental health. We need strong arts programs for every student in our school district. The VAPA teachers and programs that we have currently are wonderful, but it isn't enough. There are huge gaps in many of the programs and a VAPA TOSA can shine a light on those, those deficiencies and come up with solutions to fill those gaps. As a, non, a local nonprofits organization, I want to, hire, to highlight an area where Vapatosa can help us navigate a system in order to offer our programs to schools. I know of two other organizations, the California Chamber Orchestra and the American Jazz Institute, which in past years has tried to bring free educational concerts and clinics to our students, but gave up when they kept running into walls and weren't able to find a person in the district that could work with them. The California Chamber Orchestra, Orchestra subsequently approached Marietta Unified School District and with Marietta's VAPA coordinator, were able to provide free concerts for their students. Our students lost out. So I urge you to approve this position, which will greatly improve the quality of arts education in our schools and for our students. 
Thank you. Next, we have Amy Thomas. Again, you have three minutes. Your timer's on the screen, and you'll get a ding at 30 seconds. Great, thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Thomas, and I'm the band and choir director at Gardner Middle School. I'm also a TVUSD student, uh, third through 12th grade, and um, I am here because through my education in TVUSD, I have learned to pursue excellence in everything. Where did I learn that? I learned that in my fifth grade band program at Red Hawk. I learned that in my middle school band programs at Vail Ranch. I was um, first class, sixth grade class, um, and my sixth grade teacher, I will never forget her, um, she integrated arts in everything. We were learning about um, cavemen and cave paintings. We didn't just read it in a book. She created an entire cave, and we got to paint inside of the cave. When we were learning poetry, she led us in song on her guitar. When we were learning descriptive writing, we learned descriptive writing, and then we held a fashion show, and we acted it out. And from her, I will never forget any of that content, excuse me, any of that content, because the arts were integrated. I had excellent band directors in middle school. I had excellent band, choir, drama, uh, directors in high school at Temecula Valley, and I had excellent coaches. And I bring up coaches because excellence is a tradition regardless of content area or F after school activity. That is our tradition. That is Temecula Valley. We currently, as a teacher, I can speak to this, my colleagues and I have worked very hard to create excellent classes, courses, pathways for our students. We have excellent programs. We have excellent students, excellent families. But what we don't have, we do not have an excellent support system. And so our plates, with as much excellence as we can dish out, can only carry so much, and I'm sure you're aware that they are more than overflowing. We need this position to help us maintain and even grow that excellence. Because I know that each one of you are here to grow and support that excellence. And this is the first step and a way to do it. So I'm asking you to please, please approve this to maintain our tradition of excellence in this district. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to our consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted with one vote. There is no discussion of consent calendar items unless members of the governing board or staff request that specific items be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. I call for a motion and a second to approve by consent items one through 48 that were not pulled for separate action or tabled. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Mm -hmm. Now we'll have Mr. Arce introduce our assistant principal. All right, members of the board and members of our community, we're very excited to introduce our brand new assistant principal at Margarita Middle School. So I'd like to ask Mr. Brent Wozniak to come up here with me. Brent has been in education 14 years. He began teaching in 2008, and this will be his 50, 15th year in education. He grew up in Santa Clarita Valley, just north of LA for most of his childhood. His family moved to Rancho Bernardo in North County, San Diego during the mid-90s, where he attended middle school and high school. He attended San Diego State University, where he earned a BA in social science and a single subject teaching credential in social science. He also got a master's degree in educational leadership and administrative services credential as part of the Graduate School of Education and Information Studies and the Principal Leadership Institute at UCLA. So he's attended uh, San Diego State University um, for the BA in Liberal Arts and Sciences, a single subject teaching credential from San Diego State, and master's from UCLA. 
He's been married to his wife, Bethleen, for five years, who's also an educator. Together, they have two children, twin boys, Clark and Cal. I see that smile on your face. Yeah. And they'll be turning four years old this July. God bless you, Brent. In their free time, they enjoy playing golf, enjoying the outdoors with his family, and his wife and Brent are also avid world travelers. I give you Mr. Brent Wozniak. Thank you, sir. Good evening, members of the governing board and executive cabinet. It's a privilege to be here with you this evening. Uh, I'm honored to be joining the Margaret Middle School family and Team TVUSD as an assistant principal for 22, 23, and beyond. And I'm even more um, honored to join the team of educators that I know I will work very well with and that I know work so hard for our students in Temecula Valley. Uh, and my wife and I, um, again, planted our roots here in Temecula specifically um, because we knew that they had excellent schools and they would get a world-class education in this district. So I really appreciate the opportunity. I really appreciate the introduction. And I even more so appreciate the opportunity to serve um, in the district where I will call my home district on behalf of my sons, Clark and Cal, for the next 13 and a half years. Yeah. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. It's a privilege, and I enjoy the time being here this evening, and I look forward to this next year. Thank you, Frank. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to our information reports. Our first um, information item is student survey results, continuous improvement through feedback. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll be brief on this one tonight. We just have a few slides to share with you, but this is part of what we started a couple years ago was this push to really increase what I would call student voice in our district. And so, as you know, the last school year, not this current one that we just finished, but the year before, uh, we started the Superintendent Student Council, where I have representatives from all of our secondary schools who meet with me on a fairly regular basis to talk just very candidly about issues. Um, positive things going on on their campuses, things they want to be sure we keep, and then of course things that they want to be sure um, or, or that we do something about. And so we've, we've talked about a variety of things in this group. Sometimes we bring in special visitors. Mr. Evans came to one of our, our more recent meetings and really talked about kind of branding of the district and capitalizing on their experiences. But part of what we set out to do a couple of years ago in increasing student voice involved getting the reactions about the experiences from as many of our graduating senior students as we possibly could. And so this current year uh, in June, actually we did it in May, we launched a very brief survey that went out to all of our seniors and we were uh, pleasantly surprised at how many of them engaged. Let's see if this will, oh, thank you so much. Okay, so we sent it out uh, toward the end of the school year. We intentionally waited until AP and IB tests were over. Most of our finals were over. We tried to make the survey very friendly, um, very brief. There were only three questions, and I'll walk you through those in just a moment. Uh, we even tried to incentivize students. We said that 20 students would be randomly selected, and thanks to Mrs. Anna Sebar, who figured out how to write uh, kind of some computer programming to randomly select 20 of those students who finished on time. We met them at Starbucks at pre-designated times and, and treated them to a drink. Again, just an opportunity to say thank you, to hear more about their experiences and, and to talk to them uh, in a real one-on-one -on -one level. So we had um, about 271 kids respond. It was about 12%, which is low by most standards, but for our first time doing it, um, we were pleasantly surprised uh, at how many did it and how quickly they did it. We asked open-ended questions, um, and I'll walk you through those in just a moment. And the directions specified that we wanted them to think about their whole experience in TVUSD, not just the last couple of years, because I know all of our minds go to the roller coaster ride, and I use that word intentionally because you're gonna see that that came up in a lot of their responses. During COVID, it was a roller coaster of all kinds of changes, ups and downs. But we asked them to intentionally think about from the time they came to TVUSD until now their finished date. So maybe that was in kindergarten and they've had 13 years with us or maybe even preschool or maybe it was in ninth or 10th or 11th grade more recent. And so we tried to frame it in a very global, we're talking about your entire TVUSD experience. So the first question we asked was simple. How would you describe your experiences in TVUSD? Um, and it was, it was very nice to see that most of them didn't give us what I would call text talk. 
Uh, we had complete sentences, we had punctuation. Some of them went on and did a five paragraph essay uh, to answer number one, and others were a little more brief. But April Zikafus over in the Assessment Accountability Office, she's sitting out here. April saved the day when I said to her, how on earth are we going to encapsulate and display this data? Because it was pages and pages and pages of narrative, which again, it was what we wanted, but trying to find a way to synthesize and summarize that was a little difficult, and I'm so grateful that April worked her magic on this. She created a Wordle, and as you know, you've seen Wordles before. Basically, the size of the word indicates how often it appeared in their responses. And so, 92% um, of the responses were positive, and the most frequently used uh, descriptors were great, fun, amazing, good, uh, many went on to attribute those uh, reactions. They attributed them to staff, to teachers, and to the friends who made them feel welcomed, supported, and many used the term even to those who challenged me, uh, which we were really impressed by. Um, and then, of course, this was the question that many referenced, uh, a brief reference to COVID, having described it as a roller coaster. But again, 92% positive. And, and you see lots of things there, enjoyable, amazing, educational, um, and many references to people or, or groups of people, staff, friends, uh, teachers. The next question we asked them, again, open-ended, what things did you like most during your time in TVOSD? Again, your entire time. Um, and the big thing here, you can see another Wordle, but the biggest thing, if we had to summarize with one word, would be connections. Uh, that was what most students are really referring to, the involvement in co-curriculars and extracurriculars and their connections with others, their connections to school. Um, they commented, many of them, on their teachers and how their teachers connected with them, showing them that they care, um, and showing that they care for them as individuals, not just as learners. They mentioned their friends, um, getting to know new people. They specifically mentioned activities like VAPA, like CTE, all of those things that we do to keep kids involved and to keep them connected in school. Attending performances, performing on stage, going on field trips, all of those extracurriculars that I know come in front of the board so frequently. Um, we wanted to be sure that you notice and that you see that the students are aware of that and as stu the students appreciate it. Again, they're our end user. We need to be hearing directly from them. And then the third and final question, what things would you change about your experiences in TVUSD? And this was part of the question. In other words, what can we improve in? And the most common response here was nothing. There were many, many responses that simply said nothing. Um, for those who did respond, what stood out were mental health supports. Uh, they mentioned specifically accessibility to mental health support and resources for mental health supports. Um, they talked about staffing. Every once in a while, a student would point to a particular staff member who they didn't have a great relationship with. Uh, they talked about adverse behavior responses um, with many references to bullying uh, being the most commonly a thing or common thing that they referenced. Uh, they asked particularly uh, that students be allowed uh, at the high schools to make more choices um, and to have their complaints heard. So those were some of the specifics that we heard there. We, we of course, heard a little bit about bathroom maintenance. Uh, that's always uh, an issue in most districts. Um, and then I thought it was interesting, we heard a little bit about removing barriers to involvement and acknowledging and celebrating the differences of others. And so those, those really touched us because they support our work with equity, access, and inclusion. A little bit uh, on food options. Um, we saw positive comments in regard to food, and then we saw some other comments about wanting different foods. Uh, workload, we heard a little bit about, um, particularly the stress uh, and the pressure to perform in AP or IB classes. And so um, basically we wanted to just show you kind of in a nutshell, this is a compilation, again, thanks to Mrs. Zikafus for putting it together. An open-ended survey, our first kind of attempt out of the gate we had a small participation rate, but I would advocate and argue that every student's voice is important. So even if we only heard from one, we need to acknowledge that and we need to 
to really listen to that. So we'll be expanding the superintendent's council, uh, barring any additional pandemic issues this year, but hopefully uh, the intent is to expand that council this year and to take it to their school site. So they will each be representing on their campuses some opportunities to facilitate dialogue there with their colleagues and then bringing it back to, uh, to our team. We do try to keep it students only. I know we have a, a board member or two who attend every once in a while, but we're very picky. A lot of times folks say, we'd like to come and we'd like to listen, but it's really my goal to get those kids to talk and to get them to open up. So we intentionally don't want a lot of adults in the room. Um, this last meeting, uh, we were struggling with attendance a bit, so we, we bribed them with pizza and sodas, and that tended to increase um, attendance a bit, and I think at the end they had me promising that we would do that each time. So again, it's all part of a campaign to just really get more student opportunities for, for student voice and to hear them more, but we wanted you to see the results of this real informal, qualitatively based uh, uh, survey. I don't know if you have questions on that, but I promise it's real brief. Questions or comments? I think it's very cool to see that it's a wormhole. Um, moving on to our second item, it's the board self evaluation. And Mr. Skinwitz was great and sent me um, his notes, and I'm going to share them. So I'm going to directly read what he sent um, because I think it was pretty uh, on point. His overall impression, he said, um, in reviewing the self-evaluation report, it was clear that the board responses were overwhelmingly on the same page with a few areas left for us to discuss in more detail or provide clarification. This board consistent, is consistently prepared, visible on campuses and school events, and available to all stakeholders. As we review the self-evaluation, the process is inherently awkward but our hope is that we can open up and have a productive and healthy dialogue with an end goal of awareness and self-improvement as we move forward through the summer into the next school year. Areas that stood out to discuss to start when we see a not sure indicated. Um, if you have any questions, you can raise those questions now if anyone um, had answered that they were unsure or didn't know how to answer that question. Um, or you can contact the superintendent and the board president to discuss separately if you want a deeper understanding on something that you answered you were unsure to. So uh, starting off, um, on number, his first was number 10, direction to the superintendent at board meetings. A few people seem to feel this is not common. So we had two that um, felt that this was strong, um, two that well, this was a, a strength, and then one that was unsure. Does anybody have any comments? Or I know this can be an awkward process. This is not so awkward now in my fourth year, but um, <coughs> as S Sandy can probably attest, this it can be odd, but it's a great opportunity to have these conversations and understand those questions and make changes if we need to make changes as a board. I, I believe that I was the one that said I didn't know, unless someone else wants to claim that one. Um, but I mean, what this is asking is if we only give direction to the superintendent at the board meetings. So I guess I don't know that if, if, if board members are doing that outside of this this arena, um, that's my only question there, is, is I, don't, I don't know how I would know if someone is giving so, direction outside the board meeting. So you're correct, this is always an awkward discussion and, and the law requires that it be done in a public setting for transparency uh, purposes. I try not to say much during this process because this is the board's self-evaluation. This is for you to evaluate and reflect on, on your collective behaviors. But I can share in this one, I do not feel as though members of this board ever try to give me direction outside of board meetings. I feel that I meet with each of you regularly um, and I hear your opinions and your thoughts and your desires and your even individual priorities, but you will frequently hear me say, do we have a collective three from the board? Um, because we take direction from the board 
as a whole when we have three. So I'm not sure if that helps to clarify for you. It is an odd question to ask you individually because you only know the conversations you're having with me. So I hope that helps. Yes, that's great, I appreciate that. That's good to hear it from your perspective. <laughs> Since, yeah, we don't really know what's going on behind the closed door. And then moving on to number 17, um, discuss agenda items before board meetings in order for cabinet and staff to prepare properly. Um, if there's questions on agenda items, please send them to the superintendent in advance of a board meeting. Um, is there any question on this one or you, do you wanna have discussion? We have three that, um, feel that we do this, and then we have two more that fell a little by the wayside in that. Um, so this question really pertains to, if we have a question, we're not blindsiding the superintendent or staff, we're asking these questions ahead of time instead of um, bringing them up where they clearly won't have answers if it's an ambiguous question that we're answering. Um, I feel like we do this all, I'm not sure how, um, how this question pertained to you when you when you guys did the survey, but I feel like our board is pretty well prepared and we reach out to staff early on. Any thoughts, Mrs. Hinkson? No, we just, we actually have that in our board handbook as a protocol that um, uh, it's desirable for us to send our questions ahead of time so that staff has an opportunity to prepare. Um, sometimes we're asking specific questions that data is required or they may not have an, an answer on hand, right? Um, also in some cases it helps us to um, not have to pull something for a, out of consent to have a discussion about it when it's just a simple fact that uh, we want information on, so um, additional information. So. Um, I think that um, I was probably one of them who rated that as a four, I don't know, whatever the, is it a five, a four? Just because I felt like maybe we have, you know, some newer board members that might not, it, it kind of becomes routine. Like you go through the um, agenda over the weekend when it comes out, if you have any questions, you send them in. I think we're requested to send them in by Monday um, so that we can get some responses to some things, or at least if it's not a response, it's an opportunity pre to prepare for a possible discussion during a board meeting. So um, just, uh, you know, we have some newer people and just being familiar with all of our protocols and how things work, so. Um, I, you know, I guess my comment on this is, uh, the first year we did this, right, we had um, a lot more things pop up. Um, it really looks like there's uh, you know, it's it's real easy, just like when you have your students, right, or, or parents sometimes, or even kids, they, they look at a test that they took, and the first thing they do is say, oh, I got a 98, what did I get wrong, okay? So it's really easy to look at the not green, but when you look at the overall, that pretty much there's nothing out of green or blue this time. It really speaks to the way this board works together and um, the way that we listen to each other and follow the protocols. Um, and that the communication that we've had on, had on, you know, had in that respect, and the work that we've done to get there. Because you can see the, the change in some of the items, like um, some of the items having to do with advocacy um, or um, board policies or things that we weren't as strong on in the beginning that have really um, solidified. And, and when you look at this, a, a blue isn't a, you know, it's like, ah, oh, let's first go see where. Um, where those pop up, but you know, really, when you look at it overall, it's it's uh, it's pretty encouraging for the way this group works together. So, I would agree with you. I think five of the five of us are completely different, um, and we all come from different directions, and we cohesively have really melded together to work well, and it's been really great. Mr. Skowitz, do you have any questions? Or you're super tiny, and I have bad vision, so you have to yell. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would just say for, first, uh, thanks, Mrs. Bros, for running this. I'm, I apologize for not being there in person. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think when we were reviewing this, when it all came back to us, like Mrs. Hankson just went through perfectly, to have the greens and the blues has not always been the case. Um, and it was kind of refreshing, but I think for all of us, if we can walk away from this review to 
you know, what, whatever the areas are that there are questions or, you know, items that we can work on in the future, whether it's onboarding new members or um, in communication with the superintendent. I think the, the objective for this is just, you know, to know what we all think and it's in a pretty good spot. And then what do we take away from it so that we make sure, like with what Mrs. Barclay was clarifying, that we're all on the same page. And maybe there were questions we had no idea that that was something to talk about, but this uh, affords us the opportunity to, to put it out there and make sure everyone feels comfortable and feels like they're able to understand, you know, what's expected of us and how we can work, you know, even better together. That's all. So I'm just going to hit one more from this list, um, and it is the 29 and 30, and I think um, on 30, the question is, there is a good relationship between how long the board spends on an agenda item and the importance of the item. I don't know if we want to discuss this at all. Um, 29 also represents the, the length of our meeting, so that question is a little, and we're a little mixed here. Um, so does everyone feel that, uh, is there a question on how long the meetings are? Or do we think they're too short, too long? No, I, <clears throat> our meetings are usually pretty long because we have a lot of items to go over. And um, one of the things I enjoy is that we don't give short shrift to anything. That if it's something that people are, feel really deeply about or feel is important, that we, um, actually thoroughly discuss it and not just, you know, give it a little bit of attention. Uh, I just wanted to relate to the other question about um, if there's an agenda item you're not sure of. I always find that when I reach out to uh, the superintendent or her uh, assistant that it's great that I get an answer and I'm ready for the meeting, not that I'm now going to go to item 17 that we're doing consent items and you know and and I don't know what it is but I I've always found that reaching out I get the answer so that we are prepared for meetings and that's I think one of the strengths of us as a board even though as you say we're all different backgrounds different um, frames of reference even from different parts of the country um, we all seem to um, apply the right amount of time and give the time that items need and uh, make good decisions and not just kind of go through things without paying attention. And that, I think that's a real strength of the board is that we give things the amount of attention they need based on their importance. You know, there used to be several times I can remember and Mrs. Hinkson can remember that we were going till midnight. Um, and I notice now our meetings don't do that anymore. And I think we all come pretty prepared and those questions are answered ahead of time so that we understand the item before we're voting on it. And I appreciate that as it is our vote, um, voting record. Um, does anyone else have any comments on this? Yeah, I, I think our longest meetings were during uh, the first part of COVID when we had a lot to share with the community. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much like an hour long agenda topic um, that added to the length of our meeting as well as really having other business to conduct even though we tried to streamline that. So, um, yeah, I think question 30, where it's um, the relationship between how long we spend on an item and the importance of the item. So um, I think that, um, I think that's pretty well in proportion. We, we have really established our planning calendar that um, uh, decides what topics we're going to discuss. And um, uh, those topics uh, we've tried to, uh, um, budget a certain amount of time, right? Um, based on whether it's a regular item or a, um, a study item. So, um, you know, which would be the ones that we identify that we want to spend more time on, or we identify that we want to have a workshop on. So we are um, purposely, or pur purposely, purposely, well, I don't know, okay. Um, saying that these are items that are important to us and we want to spend more time on those topics, okay? Um, and then, of course, there's always the routine business um, of the district that, that needs to be accomplished, too. So I, I think I feel a lot better about the balance we have now and, um, you know, the, and, and really the, I don't know how we could have avoided um, the length of the meetings with the amount of public comment that we had. 
the amount of report, um, you know, uh, sharing with the public what was going on in, and really, let's, let's hope it's a once in a lifetime event, right? That um, nobody ever has to experience this kind of thing again in education, right? So. I just wanted to add one thing on the question about giving uh, direction to the superintendent. Um, I, I would frame it in a different way. Um, I, I find when I talk to the superintendent and I have a, a question about something. I don't so much give direction to her as she gives me a clarity about why we're doing what we're doing. If I have a question about a program or a school or, or, or why is the suspension rate in this school higher than that school or why are the graduation rates different? And um, it's more of not me giving her direction, it's more of her <coughs> clarifying the direction of my question uh, so that it's clear to me why whatever policy we have in place is a policy we have in place, rather than me saying, well, we need a new policy. That's, I, don't, I don't feel that that's my role as a board member to dictate. My role is to question what's going on and understand why things are what they are and maybe make a suggestion for improvement, but not, not to um, give direction to the superintendent. Any other further comments, questions? Oh, can we go back just a little bit there on that blue one? I think the, the board has an effective process to review, revise, and adopt policies. I know this is um, one area that we've, we've um, that it is, it is the board's responsibility to update um, policies. And I think um, that's an area that with the pandemic, we kind of fell behind on. We do get a report from, I don't know if it's a report, but like a hot sheet almost, right? From CSBA every month of board policies that have changed and sometimes there are sometimes they're just routine but sometimes there are things that are based on new laws or things that are based on current um, societal influences things that are going on currently and so those are really important and i know at the beginning of the pandemic we when we when i look back that far we were about three months back um i think we're probably like a year back maybe I mean I, I don't know but I know that there's we, we have some work to do on updating our, our policies and catching up now because we've had so much else on our plate that has um, really been priority over that um, but I think maybe going back to um, all of those I don't know for lack of a better word hot sheet right that gives us the list of things that needed to be updated and maybe work work on them on a priority basis we haven't seen a lot of policy updates come to us on our agenda. I, I know you, there was one that was discussed last time, but, but I think that that is an area that we, we as a board need to um, make sure that we're keeping up to date on. Um, and just you know, as a reference to his, history here, I don't remember what year it was, but it's probably been maybe four or five years ago, about four years ago. We had CSBA come in and work with us on our entire policy manual and update the entire thing and bring us current on all of our policy manual. And so every year we readopt our entire policy manual, but um, there are updates that happen in between there. So I, I really think that that I mean, it doesn't show as a strong need, but in my opinion, it is a strong need that we need to kind of catch up on at this point. scroll a little more should be about the end I, I really want oh okay I'm, I'm assuming that it says the board evaluates the performance of the board <laughs> this is what we're doing right here right so um, okay but again if this is the first time you're going through yeah. this process you probably have no idea right 
Yeah, and it's it's very odd that we do this in public, right? You think we'd have our discussions. It, it kind of makes sense to me to have them when we're working on our board handbook in January, but this process comes up on our calendar with CSBA uh, at this time of year, just like um, we're looking at all the employee evaluations and everything, right? So it fits right in there. Is that the end? That's the end. Okay. Anybody else? I know I added a couple things in there that were my opinions. But. Uh, Mr. Skowitz? She gives us a thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our action items. Does anyone need a moment or are we good to keep rolling? Okay. Action number one, I call for a motion and a second to approve the continuance of resolution 2021-22-36, recognizing a state of emergency and authorizing teleconference meetings pursuant to AB 361. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Kingston. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Action number two. I call for a motion and a second to approve resolution 2021-22-65 on board compensation for missed meetings. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Barclay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 4-0 with Mrs. Hinkson abstaining. Action number three, I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2021-22-64, order of the election, ordering a consolidated governing board member biennial election specifications of the election order and request for consolidations at the approximate cost of $200,000. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Ms. Barclay. And does anyone want to just briefly? Dr. Mickey? I believe this is a requirement. Yeah, we do this on a regular basis, particularly with an election year. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Action item number four I call for a motion and a second to adopt the 2022 2023. Local Control and Accountability Plan. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Mrs. Barclay. So does that, uh, does that statement not include the remainder of the topic because it says adoption of local control and accountability plan and presentation of the California dashboard local indicators? I think legal has vetted it and was fine. I think we're going to hear the presentation okay. now, so we're okay. Can we we did, but we're, um, we have some slides from. Yeah. Okay, so good evening, um, Madam President, members of the board and cabinet. Tonight we're here to give you an update on the California school dashboard, specifically the local indicators. Um, so we have three objectives for this presentation, which will be a, a pretty quick one, to provide you with an overview of the measures that we use to assess each district's progress um, on the state priorities, to provide the results for the local indicators, which will, will be reported on the public California schools dashboard site, and then finally to define the indicators um, that serve as metrics for the uh, 2021 through 24 LCAP and the data that's reported. So we'll begin with our first objective, um, which is uh, to provide an overview of the dashboard indicators. So you'll see there are two different columns. There are state indicators and local indicators. State indicators are provided by the state through the assessment results and data collected annually, and the results were formally communicated on the dashboard with a color gauge. But this is important, but because of the modified dashboard that was last year, uh, there will only be a report of the status 
uh, for each of the state indicators, and the color gauges will resume in 2023. So this coming November, you won't see color on the dashboard um, because there will not be both status and change to report. However, the only exception for the 22 state indicator will be the college and career indicator for which there will be um, no data reported. The college and career indicator is reported using graduate performance on the grade 11 CASP assessments. And as you know, this assessment was not viable for many of the districts in 2021. So additionally, on the right side, there are local indicators that are reported annually by each school district and submitted to the dashboard, which results in a designation of what we call standard met. So now we're going to summarize what will be reported on each of the local indicators. So the first indicator um, is called basics. It includes teachers, instructional materials, and facilities. The indicator serves as a metric for LCAP goal number one, which is to refine instructional practices and learning opportunities. So the data for this indicator comes from the, 22, uh, the 2022 SARCs, which reflect the 2020-21 school year. So as you can see, we had zero misassignments of teachers, of English learners. We had zero percent of students were without access, who were without access of their own materials, and there were zero instances where facilities did not meet the good repair standard, so we met standard. So on the next indicator is the implementation of the state academic standards, and the data for this indicator is generated through the completion of the California Department of Education self-reflection tool. Um, the indicator also serves as a metric for goal number one in our LCAP plan. So the self-reflection evaluates four areas, providing professional learning, instructional materials, identification of programs to improve instructions, and implementation of standards. Um, and it determines where the district falls from the exploration and research phase to full implementation and sustainability. So that's the range. In all four areas, we are in full implementation or full implementation and sustainability, with the exception of the next generation science standards and the history social stand science, as we are continuing the process of piloting, adopting, and implementing curriculum for these two um, subjects, which will be coming this school year. For the final element of the self-evaluation tool, we are at full implementation for identifying professional learning for groups, individuals, and for providing support for teachers on the standards they have not yet mastered. So the next indicator is parent and family engagement, and the data for the indicator reflects the results of surveys provided to our district level parent and family committees. It serves as a metric for goal number three, reach out to families and community members. The self-reflection tool uh, utilizes a rating scale from initial implementation to full implementation and sustainability. And for the area of building relationships, which includes all the progress statements shown here, we are in full implementation. For the areas of building partnerships, which includes all the progress statements shown here, we're also in full implementation. And then for the area of seeking input for decision making, which includes all of the progress statements shown here, we are also at full implementation. So the next indicator is the school climate and data. For this indicator, it came from the 2020, I mean the 2021-22 administration of the panorama survey. And this indicator serves as a metric for goal two, which is how we respond. So this indicator requires that we report the percentage of favorable results for the survey topics of safety, climate, and sense of belonging. So as you can see, 66% of students in grade five and 59% of students in grade six through 12 responded favorably for questions about safety, and 66% of students in grades five and 48% of students a percent of students in grades six through 12 responded favorably for questions regarding school climate, and 66% of students in grade five, and 38% of students in grades six through 12 responded favorably for questions about a sense of belonging. Uh, as, a, as a note, this survey was administered in January of 2022 in the height of the Omicron surge, so we are hopeful that next year, uh, the survey results in the administration will provide a higher rating of favorable responses. The final indicator is access to a broad course of study, which serves as a metric for goal two. 
and this indicator requires that we provide information about our students' access to and enrollment in a broad course of study. So we measure this by looking at our graduation rate, our A through G completion, and enrollment in courses that have been prioritized for the LCAP, um, such as uh, CTE, AVID, as well as AP Advanced Placement courses, as required by the state. And all of these measures are included in the local control accountability plan, the L I mean, the, the metrics for LCAP. So by analyzing these metrics, we have determined that there are no barriers preventing students from having access and that enrollment in AVID, CTE, AP courses varies by student group based on student choice and the demonstration of prerequisite skills. So to provide students with an even greater opportunity to access courses, we will continue to provide our seventh grade offerings by providing courses, our seventh period offerings, by providing courses online and uh, we'll continue to expand our AVID and CTE programs and make further uh, uh, refinements in course of, for courses of rigor using our A through G success grant that you um, approved earlier this year. So as mentioned, all of these indicators will be submitted um, and displayed with the available state metrics for the 2022 dashboard. And because they are metrics in our LCAP, they will also be included in the plan, the annual update for the 2023 LCAP. So I'd like to give a big shout out to April and her team for helping us put all of this together. It's been a, a tremendous process. Tonight is the end of the LCAP cycle. It will start right back up in July when we come back, but um, it is a process and uh, we have made every attempt for it to be as inclusive as possible and to get as much um, data as possible, especially in these local indicators. So any questions? Good. So you, you probably touched on it there at the end, and this is one of those questions I sent in ahead of time, right? So my question was um, that we received, this report includes the local indicators, and of course we've all, always been used to getting the state indicators, right? And so my question was, when would we be getting those? When will they be available for us? Because that's a big part of setting priorities, thinking about um, what, what uh, services we need to offer, et cetera. So um, I, I just wanted to bring that up um, for anyone who's new, especially that through COVID, we really haven't mm -hmm. had those state indicators. And so the ones that we evaluate locally are only a piece of that picture. And so I know you provided an attachment for me that says what data will be used for the 2022 dashboard. And it talks about our chronic absenteeism, academic data, the college and career, the English uh, learner progress, graduation rates, et cetera. And it gives the dates for those. And I just wanted to ask if maybe you could share that with all the board members, maybe with the, on the Friday update. It was already in a previous update, a it recap, was. but we will we will put it in again. Um, okay. And I think it goes with this slide, but it's uh, kind of showing the timelines. I mean, not the timelines, but what's in there. But again, this is a modified year coming up. So we'll have that information in November. Yes, is that you correct? you've yes. seen this document. It wasn't a recap recently, but we'll send it again this Friday. And yes, you should be getting that information. What we're November. being told from the state is November, but keep in mind they're in charge of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and typically we have it on our calendar for uh, the board's um, planning calendar for earlier, like right around, I don't know, isn't it about September or something? It is, and we'll be recommending when we bring that calendar suggestion list, we'll be recommending that it be pushed next year because obviously we won't have the data yet. Right, yeah. okay. It, it's been a journey because of COVID that having served on the state board and watched the, the dashboard development, it has taken a lot of time and it has had a lot of disruptions. Um, and so it, it's gonna take a little bit longer to kind no, of get understood. back into and the it also kind of describes how some of the, the information is going to be status only not change right yeah. which we typically get the change for year to year um, but I, I'm really anxious to see some of this data now that we you know has we haven't seen in several years so okay thank you I think that was dr. Valdez's last school board presentation yes. after 41 years <laughs> She's going to be watching every other Tuesday, though. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 4-0 as Mr. Skimulant's absent. 
Action item number five, a call for a motion and a second to adopt the local control and accountability plan federal addendum. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Member Barclay. Any questions on that? Sir, can you clarify for us what the federal addendum is? It's a lot of pages. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 with Mr. Skimowitz absent. Action item number six a call for a motion and a second to approve the Temecula Valley Unified School District SELPA annual service plan and annual budget plan for the 2022 2023 school year. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Second by Mrs. Barclay. Any questions? Anyone? I I don't have any questions. Does anybody else? No, we we reviewed this. Already. We did. Okay. Yeah, we're just bringing it back as an action item. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries for a zero. With Mr. Skimowitz absent. Action item number seven. I call for a motion and a second to approve changes to board policy six one four two. Seven, physical education and activity. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Member Hinkson. And Can I ask a quick question on this one? Um, I had a question about the difference between this one and the one that was on the consent agenda. And um, I think you might be prepared to, <laughs> to clarify happy that to for me. Any Thank you. Mrs. So, Day. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I, di I did see what was included about the um, ROTC, but I wasn't, I wasn't quite following the piece about where you could test out based on the standards, the passing the five of the six or, so could you maybe just like short sure. version? Okay, thanks. Yeah, to, uh, speaking of board policy updates, um, in our consent item, we typically have once or twice a year the permanent exemption list go through for students who are meeting the requirement for graduation under PE, which is uh, the credits and uh, the two years and having taken PE9. Um, PE is the only academic course that has a requirement for minutes over the course of a student's four years in high school. So even though you meet your graduation requirement, those minutes that you're required to have don't go away. So students in our district take PE. Some take two years, some take three and four. But if you're only going to take two years and stop at the graduation requirement, you have to be met with the permanent exemption, which is why we approve those seniors um, a couple times a year. This is about, uh, there's a lot of exemptions that, the, uh, that Ed Code allows for. Uh, in short, with the PFT, uh, our physical fitness test, is in transition for the state of California. So CDE said uh, the exemption that was there that was reliant on passing a five out of six on the PFT could no longer be used. Um, that is why we have more than ever our permanent exemptions because students who got the five out of six and got that temporary exemption now can't uh, qualify for that, so they're moved over to that permanent exemption list. The ROTC is more related to our board policy where students who are taking an ROTC course uh, and there's some other courses in our campuses can get that PE credit. This is recommending that rather than it just be the ninth and 10th grade that we add in 11th and 12th as well. Perfect, thank you for the clarifying that, appreciate it. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Skimowitz absent. Action number eight, I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-66, purchase of gasoline and diesel fuel from the city of Manteca gasoline and diesel fuel supplier approval to piggyback on city of Manteca. Bid. Uh, moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Skimowitz absent. 
Action number nine, a call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-69, Education Protection Account to approve the receipt and use of Education Protection Account funds for fiscal years 2021-22 and 22-23. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Mrs. Hinkson. Are there any questions on this? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Scrimmons absent. Action number 10, I call for a motion and a second to provide notice to conduct a public hearing at the governing board meeting to be held on June 28, 2022 to discuss the receipt and proposed use of funding for the education protection account for fiscal years 2021-22, I'm sorry, and 2022-23. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by member Barclay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 with member Scribblins absent. Action item number 11. I call for a motion and a second to conduct a public hearing to adopt resolution number 2021 22 69, Education Protection Account, and discuss, approve, or disapprove of the proposed use of funding for the Education Protection Account. For fiscal years 2021 through 22 and 2022 20, through 23. Moved. Moved by Mrs. Hinkson. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schwartz. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 with Mr. Scrimmons absent. I will now conduct the public hearing. This is the time and place designated for the public hearing to review and consider the adoption of resolution number 2021-22-69, Education Protection Account and the receipt and use of funds for the Education Protection Account for fiscal years 2021-22 and 2022-23. I declare the hearing now open at 7.05 p.m. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on the adoption of resolution number 2021-22-69? A total of 30 minutes is provided so members of the public can address the board. Speakers are limited to three minutes. If there are no more comments, I will declare the public hearing closed at 7.06 p.m. Action number 12, I call for a motion and a second to adopt the proposed 2022-23 budget. Moved. Moved by member Hinkson. Second. Second by member Schwartz. All those in favor say aye. Wait, don't we have a presentation on the budget? We have, do we have I think we had it last yeah, meeting. The presentation came uh, at the last board okay, meeting. Okay, I guess I wasn't here. All those in favor say aye. I missed it, but I read the whole budget. So. You're good, folks. <laughs> cover to cover. I, I do have one question for you, sure. though. I know we got an update today from CSBA, right, of um, all Good kinds money. of things that um, uh, were finalized in the... Does, does any of that now affect your budget? It will change next year's proposed budget revenue numbers. Um, however, I don't believe we'll be doing a 45-day update. I think we'll just be doing um, budget revisions and moving forward. But I will put the detail of what that means to our budget in the Friday recap this week. Okay, because I mean, there's some pretty substantial... Um, yeah, some things came up and some things went down. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so it doesn't require that you re... We're not legally required to. No, we can. We do have a 45-day window if we'd like to revise the adopted budget. Um, can we get some indication about how? You said you're going to put in the Friday update, right? How much that's going to change numbers? Right. Um, you know, and, and if you feel like a, you know, based on that, that there should be a, an update done to it. Uh, otherwise, we would just do the quarterly update, right? We get a quarterly report. When's our next report that revise, not revises, but gives us an update? Um, we could agendize it for whenever you'd like, but normally the next time you would see uh, the budget is at estimated or unaudited actuals, which is September. So I'm happy to bring it in September if that works. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just very curious because there's a lot of items on there, um, transportation, SPED, 
um, per student funding, right? A lot of um, things, so I'd like to see how it affects the budget. Yeah, and I'll, you'll definitely get the information. It's just whether or not it comes to you as a formal revision of the adopted budget or just revising the budget moving forward. Right. And it would be nice if they got that all off before we had to do the budget, right? <laughs> In a perfect world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, great. We have a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 with Mr. Kimmos absent. Resolution number, I'm sorry, action item number 13. I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021 22 61. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Member Kingston. Does anyone have any questions on this? Well, can you just give us a brief, um, I know it's a CFD, can you just give us a brief um, description? So yeah, this we do every year where uh, the board authorizes the district to levy taxes for all of the CFDs outstanding. And so you should see this recurring on an annual basis. Thank you. Is the motion on the floor? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Skimless absent. Action item number 14. I call for a motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2021-22-68. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Member Hinkson. Any questions? Is this for the French Valley, what we talked about at the last meeting? Yes, and in order to expedite the process, we right. will be uh, piggybacking on some bids out there for um, uh, prefab materials and um, modular buildings. Right. Thank you, Nicole. Mm -hmm. There's a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 with Mr. Skimless absent. Action item number 15. I call for a motion and a second to approve CSCA and TVUSD memorandum of understanding licensed vocational nurse LVN site health support and the new job description. Licensed Vocational Nurse, LVN, Site Health Support. Moved. Moved. Moved by Member Hinkson and seconded by Mr. Schwartz. I know we've already heard this. Um, any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Schumann's absent. Action number 16, I call for a motion and a second to approve the new certificated job description, social emotional team leader. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Mrs. Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0, Mr. Schwartz absent. Action number 17, I call for a motion and a second to approve the new certificated job description, visual and performing arts teacher on special assignment. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. I do want to comment on this one. This has been something we've been hoping for for a very long time. Um, our VAPA, as we even saw in the survey, as we heard, we, um, I, and that was one of the things that came up in the um, superintendent's council is how important um, band and the extracurriculars are to our students. And so, um, and of course, you know, my history, right? Being married to a retired band director and appreciate the comments from two very respected individuals who have had a big part in our VAPA programs in our district. So important and um, I'm, I'm really hoping that we um, can expand some of our programs and uh, especially at elementary level and and give and provide a little more support for for what's going on because there's some amazing things in it you know when we're talking about that connection to school that comes up over and over too um, and just how important these are to our students well-being so big hearty yes we have a motion on the floor all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries four zero number screen one's absent Action item number 18, I call for a motion and a second to approve the revised student teacher calendar 2022-2023. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Mrs. Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Skinner's absent. 
action item number 19. I call for a motion and a second to approve the revised substitute salary schedule 2022-2023, effective July 1st, 2022. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Member Barclay. If I could. So yes. I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about this. I think you had initial discussion maybe last, we, last we meeting. We talked meeting. about it at the last meeting and um, so, Go ahead, Sandy. Yeah, so can I just get an update from staff, um, mm -hmm. a little bit more information on that, because I know my interest has been in our substitute salary schedules, especially for teachers, is that we, after we conclude our negotiations for our other employees, um, it's, it's always been an issue that we haven't really looked at our substitute teacher salaries. And so we have been trying to um, look at those the last several years and, and make appropriate adjustments. And so... I think you know we've just um, settled um, negotiations for both groups, and again, we kind of did ask that each year we bring back the substitute teacher schedule to look at um, whether we want to consider them for an increase. So I'm a, I'd like to hear where this is at and what conversation, if you can update me on it, please. Sure. So uh, this additional substitute uh, salary item that we're bringing um, is in response to what we did with the long-term long -term and short-term daily rates at our last board meeting. So one of the things I shared with the board was uh, we had some um, a temporary increase that we did for those pay rates, for those daily rates, and we saw that they definitely uh, had some positive impact, specifically during some tough staffing shortages times uh, with the um, variant um, uh, situations that we had uh, causing exposure situations but we've seen that that those have been mitigated for the most part now and so what we proposed to the board and what was approved last time was a reduction by an amount that's equivalent to 50 percent of what the temporary increase was and that's what we did for short term and long term so there are two specific um, other um, substitute salary uh, rates that also were temporarily increased uh, as part of that, and those were the difficult to fill rates and the special education tip so rates. And so those went to an amount of $230. The original rates were $150 and $200. So our proposal and our recommendation is that those also be reduced by 50% so that the difficult to fill rate goes to 190, which is still a, um, an increase from the original amount and 215, uh, which is still an increase from the original amount. Um, can, can we see like, okay, so we did, we, we had our initial, you know, where we were at and then we made some adjustments and then we said we were gonna come back the following year and, and we did, right? We made a second adjustment too and then we made a temporary adjustment and now we're making, a, you know, ha half of that adjusted back and can we see maybe a little bit of a history, like what we've done over the last four or I, five years I, and I'd where we started and where we are now? Yeah, I, I'd be happy to send to the board uh, some kind of matrix that kind of shows where historically we've been with some of these uh, salary rates, yeah. uh, substitute Well, rates. I mean, we went a long time without some changes. That's why we um, right. uh, determined to make a change. But I, I kind of like to see what has the, you know, what, what's happened now over, over these several years and where are we at compared sure. to where we were? And then, and then I guess the second part of that is, is where are our neighbors at, right? And so what does that look like and how yeah. competitive are we right now too? Yeah, I can provide both that. pieces of that information. I, I would too. love that. Sure. And I'm sure, I'm sure the rest of the board. Yeah, would. you can expect to receive that from me. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's a motion on the floor. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion car passes, carries 4 0 with Mr. Clement Passer. Action item number 20. I call for a motion and a second to approve these variable term waiver requests from August 11th, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second. Oh. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0 with Mr. Schmidt's absent. Action item number 21. I call for a motion and a second to approve resolution number 2021 22 67, awarding Bernard's 
Brothers Incorporated for lease laceback construction services for the construction of TK8 site phase two project. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Member Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Smith absent. Okay. Action number 22, I call for a motion a second to approve the five firms identified as qualified to provide lease, lease back construction services to the Temecula Valley Unified School District. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Second by Member Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Mr. Skinner is absent. Action item number 23. I call for a motion to second to provide notice of conduct of public hearing for the tentative agreement, Article 6, Compensation and Benefits, 6 22, 2022, between the Temecula Valley Unified School District and the California School Employees Association and its Chapter 538. Moved. Moved by Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Member Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Mr. Schumann's absent. Action number 24. I call for a motion a second to conduct a public hearing on the tentative agreement Article 6, Compensation and Benefits 2022-2022 between the Temecula Valley Unified School District and the California School Employees Association and its Chapter 538. Moved. Moved by Member Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Member Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4-0 with Member Schumann's absent. Okay, we'll now conduct another public hearing. <laughs> Adam Ozzy. Um, this is the time and the place designated for the public hearing to review and consider the Temecula Valley Unified School District's California School Employees Association and its Chapter 538 Tentative Agreement Article 6 Compensation and Benefits, June 22, 2022. I declare the hearing now open at 7.21 p.m. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on the Temecula Valley Unified School District? California School Employees Association and its Chapter 538 Tentative Agreement, Article 6, Compensation and Benefits. A total of 30 minutes has been provided so members of the public can address the board. Speakers are limited to three minutes. There are no comments. I will declare the public hearing closed at 7.21 p.m. Action item number 25, I call for a motion a second to accept and approve the tentative agreement, Article 6, Compensation and Benefits, on June 22, 2022, between the Temecula Valley Unified School District and the California School Employees Association, it's Chapter 538, pending CSEA 610 approval and unit ratification, and signed certificate number two for the disclosure of collective bargaining agreement. Moved. Moving Mr. Schwartz. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Hinkson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 4 0. Mr. Schumann is absent. Mr. Arce, can you please give us a negotiations update? Sure, I'll be very brief. Um, uh, thank you to the uh, board for the approval of the CSEA and district tentative agreement on Article 6, compensation and benefits, and we're happy to have signed that agreement with CSEA. On the TVA side of things, we uh, met with them briefly to discuss uh, a pending subcommittee topic, and that's the elementary and middle school uh, department chair stipends. And so uh, we're hoping to continue to have some of that very important conversation. And also, as you saw, we had some job descriptions that were approved by the board today. And so we want to thank both associations for their willingness to work with the district in that process. And that is my brief negotiations update. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, board comments, if there's any. I just have one. So um, uh, I've commented on the things uh, along the way that I wanted to speak to, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. I just wanted to speak to one other item that I didn't pull that was in consent that I just kind of wanted to um, point out as I think it's, it's a really important um, consideration. It's um, I am ready 
uh, surviving in an active assailant training for our employees. Um, and so I think that that's a, a really important uh, piece in today's world. And I'm, I was really glad to see that uh, that training is moving forward. And um, you know, as hard as it is that we at least are addressing the problem and um, being proactive and getting our employees trained to, so that they can be responsible. Because something should happen, which we pray never will. And anyways, I just wanted to bring that to the attention because sometimes when things are in consent, um, you know, there's important things there that I think uh, we should all take to heart. That's one of those things that's in our hearts right now. So that's all I have. Thank you. Mrs. Barkley? Um, not much for me tonight, but I, I do appreciate that summary of the senior survey. I did go through and read most of those individual. Uh, it was just so fun to see what the kids individually said and yeah, a lot of concerns about lunch. So interesting, but I mean, you know, typical. Um, I did notice quite a few comments about uh, maybe some, some diversity issues or, or concerns around that. So I'm looking forward to hearing kind of, you know, I know that's definitely been on, on our agenda um, to kind of hearing how we're moving forward with some of those issues. So, um, but I was pleased to see, honestly, there were so many positive responses as you read through each one. So many kids said they would change nothing, which, you know, I was impressed with, very impressed. So, um, and just happy retirement to Dr. Valdez. How exciting for you. And, uh, your illustrious career, very, um, very admirable. So congratulations. Thank you. <coughs> A few quick things. I was glad we were able to approve uh, those two new positions uh, for VAPA and social emotional team leader. We've talked a lot about mental health and uh, mental health issues affecting our students and staff and parents. And anything we can do to support them is really important. Uh, thanks to Nicole and Frank for successful negotiations with CSEA and uh, bringing that to an end, and also with TVEA. I uh, want to welcome our superintendent back. Glad to see she's healthy. And finally, uh, say goodbye to Karen, but just a temporary goodbye. I'm sure she'll come around and say hi once in a while and wish her much, much happiness and uh, good luck in her future. I'm going to be brief so that everyone gets to go home and say goodnight to our kids because we never get to do that. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is, Dr. Valdez, thank you for everything that you've provided us and the education that you've uh, provided me personally. I appreciate it, and I wish you the best. I don't expect to see you here. I hope you're doing fun things. Uh, Dr. McClay. And I know everybody's tired, so I'll go quick, too. There's just three, three things. I'll talk fast. First one, there's a lot of staffing uh, and recruiting going on this summer, more so than normal, but we are excited by it. Um, lots of good stuff. Principal openings, assistant principal openings, athletic directors, teachers, support staff. So kudos to HRD and really all of Cabinet and so many folks who have volunteered to serve on all these panels. So we are involved in some sort of recruitment or interviewing probably on a daily basis. Uh, two. Schools aren't shut down, and, and students aren't just at home playing video games. There's so much going on still on our campuses, so I just wanted to highlight a few things. Um, just under 400 students over at Vail Elementary every day, kindergarten through grade four is one particular program at the elementary yeah. level. 150 families participated in our first grade virtual backpack program this summer, pretty awesome. We've got thousands of students in the iReady program working on their iPads, and then even more than that in the elementary iPad summer camp, which is part of our partnership with Apple. So tons of kids at the elementary level still engaged, connected to school and learning. At the middle school, we just concluded three programs at Day Middle School, Margarita Middle School, and Gardner Middle School, serving over 300 students with another 35 teachers. They did a World Cup theme focused on academics as well as the social emotional learning. The high school, you know, we run two different programs, an acceleration program for students who want to get ahead, maybe take geometry or a foreign language, and then a credit recovery with just under 1,000 students in the credit recovery program uh, this summer. In addition to that, special education is running over 400 students, um, another 40 teachers or so TK through grade 12, so that these students are getting continual services throughout the summer. And almost 200 students are in the basis childcare program 
as well. So when people tend to think, oh, you know, schools are shut down and there's not much going on, uh, there's a lot of learning and fun stuff going on on many of our campuses. Second item, or that was the second item, I'm sorry, staffing, recruitments, summer school, and then thirdly, Thank you, Dr. Valdez. I know I keep teasing you that I know where you live, but it's not really a joke. I know I will come knocking, so um, words cannot begin to thank you for what you've done coming back to Temecula amidst the pandemic, so thank you. Um, I was gonna, I'll jump in with everybody else as well. Oh, sure, you want me to do that? Okay, so uh, in terms of future agenda, agenda items, staff was planning to present on the following items at the board meeting on the 26th. As you know, board, we had scheduled a one to four workshop on the 26th. Please hold your calendars for that still, although we do have one board member who won't be able to attend. So I'm gonna work with a consultant tomorrow. It's really a, a process that I would like to have the full board with. I think you saw tonight in the board self-evaluation how important it is that we do these kinds of activities with the whole group. Um, how, with that said, I think it's really important too, the last couple of years that you've had, just like I shared with cabinet today, if you get an opportunity to get away, even if it's last minute, take advantage of it, be with your families, stay healthy. It's been a, it's been a roller coaster to quote our children. So uh, keep that date for now, but know that it could change. The three items that we will be doing for sure on the 26th during open session, we'll have a safety and security update by Mr. Vickery. Well, we will uh, do the board planning and governance calendars uh, for next year. We will also, uh, we have the FPCC biennial report as well as I believe we have the facilities master plan report coming that, that should be on here. And then in closed session, one item that's missing from here is you'll have your year end superintendent's report. Thanks for letting me jump in there. Thank you. We have no reason to move back into closed session. The next um, board meeting is on July 26th. I declare the meeting closed at 7.30.